The process of shooting the video for this anthem is the most epic video um, production process I have personally been involved with. It's amazing. Who would think that we can use the culture in such a manner? Fort Charlotte was amazing. I didn't expect it to turn out so huge. It makes me wonder where am I going to be in 40 years and how far is this anthem going to go? I think of it more as a vision statement for our nation. An elderly woman stabbed to death. Family and friends still in shock. An elderly woman being found in a house here on Granary Drive. Meantime, officers in Grand Bahama investigating that island's fifth homicide. Sky Bahamas experiences delays due to a supposed stick out. Perhaps we accept that and believe that. The latest on the so-called forgotten school in Crooked Island, plus what's the holdup with the government housing program? We thought that we would have started by now. We've got those stories and more for you tonight. I'm Nakia DeVoe and this is NB12 Weekend. Sunday, a shocking killing taking place in the Carmichael Road area last night as an elderly woman was found dead in her house under very gruesome circumstances. Police are now following what they say are significant leads as the nation's murder count continues to climb. Juan McCartney reports. Police discovered the body of 74-year-old Vivian Johnson inside this home on Greenway Drive just off Carmichael Road Saturday night. Johnson, a mother of two, was found by police on the floor of a bathroom in a bedroom toward the rear of the home around 8.30 Saturday night. Police sources tell us she was stabbed several times in the neck. She was pronounced dead at the scene. However, it's believed she died earlier in the day. Sources also tell us police found a bloody knife in the yard on the outside of the home when they searched the area. However, as stunned family, friends, neighbors, and church members looked on from behind crime scene tape, Superintendent Paul Roll of the Central Detective Unit didn't give much information. Investigation is still in the early stages right now, but we have taken a 37-year-old male into custody for questioning reference to this uh, latest homicide. Uh, is he known to police? Um, let us complete this at, at this stage. I don't know yet whether or not he is known to the police, but suffice it to say that we have taken uh, this male into custody. And he was taken into custody from this residence? Uh, about an hour ago. Police have confirmed that the man in custody is Johnson's grandson. After police moved her body from the house Saturday, they also impounded a dark-colored Toyota registered in her name from the scene. We spoke to Johnson's daughter over the phone Sunday. She didn't want to appear on camera, but she did tell us the family is still reeling in a state of shock over the loss. She told us that her mother was a widower and a retiree from what was once Batalco. Her mother had been living in that same house for 40 years, and Johnson's son is in prison serving a lengthy murder sentence, more than 40 years as we understand it. Sunday afternoon, police were back at the scene of the crime, and so were we, trying to learn more about who Johnson was. That's where we met Lurie Gibson, a friend who heard about Johnson's murder Saturday night, but decided to drive by Sunday still in disbelief. I just didn't believe it, so I want to question what, what happened, what's going down. Gibson said she knew Johnson for more than 50 years, from when they both lived on Plantall Street. She described Johnson as a diminutive, neat, sensible woman who she was proud to say she kept in touch with after they both moved into the same neighborhood in Carmichael. We meet in the food store, and um, we meet the church, and I had a death um, in 2006. My son got killed by this island, and she come down and pray with me and, and stuff like that. She come to the funeral, and we was just like that, just friends. Gibson said the same way Johnson prayed with her when her son died, she prayed with Johnson when her son went to jail. During her time like that, I visit her, and we meet and we pray together, and 
and ask um, the Lord to help him to get out the problem, but he um, spending time there. Gibson, just like Johnson's neighbors and daughter, stressed that she will be missed. Her killing marks the 86th murder this year. Reporting for MB12, I'm Juan McCartney. Meantime, police over in Grand Bahama are searching for whoever's responsible for a shooting death on that island yesterday. Officers found a man's bullet-riddled body lying on the ground in front of a home on Fawcett Lane. Police say gunshots were heard in that area around 8 last night. This latest incident marks the fifth murder for Grand Bahama for the year and the 87th for the nation. Police are asking anyone with information to contact Grand Bahama authorities at 919 or 350 3107 or eight. In recent weeks, the issue of capital punishment has grabbed national headlines with politicians from both sides of the political divide weighing in on the hot button topic. Now a popular religious figure and crime activist is speaking up and lashing out at the government and the church. Our Jasmine Bonamy has more in this report. In a recent interview with NB12, Hancho lashed out at the government and church, who he says both have failed the country. The CFJ chief says capital punishment must be carried out as a part of the solution to crime. The last time capital punishment was carried out in the Bahamas was on January 6, 2000, when David Mitchell was hanged. In March 2006, the Privy Council ruled that the mandatory death sentence in the Bahamas was unconstitutional. But Hanchel said the Privy Council should not be allowed to influence decisions on hanging in the country. Instead of doing what, what, they, are, what they should do, we hide behind the Privy Council, they, 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 they hide behind their humanistic values. And it's time now for, for us to straighten this country out. The Bahamas is going in the wrong direction. The Bahamas needs strong, right leadership. We are headed the wrong way. I am appealing to the government, I'm appealing to churches to get out of the walls of the church. Churches, church people are too lazy nowadays. Get out of those four walls. Get on the street corners, go into homes, and let's meet these people and minister to these people. I believe the church has the solution to crime, but the church is asleep. The church needs to, needs, each church could go into the neighborhood right around that church and make an impact. Many condemned men at Her Majesty's prisons escaped the death penalty because the Privy Council ruled in 1993 in the Jamaica case of Earl Pratt and Ivan Morgan that it would be cruel and inhumane for prisoners to wait more than five years on death row. The lengthy appeals process has also meant that the possibility of the resumption of capital punishment in the Bahamas is very slim. Convicts who lose their cases before the Court of Appeal could still appeal to the Privy Council and the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. This process without any time limits means that the five-year period for execution set by the Pratt and Morgan ruling often runs out. If the Court of Appeal affirms a death sentence, there is no time frame for a person to appeal to the Privy Council. Hanchel insists the death penalty is needed. I am tired of hearing our officials say that there's only a small group doing all of these, all the, or committing all the crime. That's a lie again. It used to be a small group 30 years ago, but that group is now in the thousands. We live in a lawless society. We live in a, in a country where everywhere you turn, there's crime, there's violence. Thousands of people are f fearing for their lives because there's so many criminals around threatening them. People are, they are now um, um, hurting, threatening witnesses and, 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 and killing off witnesses in cases. That should not be. In July, the Constitutional Commission recommended that the Bahamas keep the death penalty on its books and also keep the Privy Council as its final court of appeal. It recommended that the law be amended to increase the likelihood that the death penalty would be carried out. It said Parliament should amend the law to tie the hands of the Privy Council. More than two months after the recommendations were formally presented to the government, the Christie administration has not yet outlined which ones will be accepted. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. And in other news, hundreds of Sky Bahamas passengers were inconvenienced today after at least a dozen members of staff called in sick for the morning and midday shifts. 
Sky Bahamas CEO Captain Randy Butler said they all called in at the same time this morning, and initially he didn't think anything about it. That is, until several pilots called the media to say there was a sick out at the airline, then we called him. Butler said he spoke to a representative of the Bahamas Pilots Alliance who assured him that there was no planned industrial action as there are no issues it has with Sky Bahamas other than outstanding negotiations on a new industrial agreement. But there has been no grievances from employees coming other than we had a meeting with pilots and everybody's being paid on time and everybody could do it getting paid more money. I'd like more money too, but the business just won't do it. So we haven't had any any informal or formal discrepancies with a group saying that this is the problem we have. I know an individual, we may have had an individual issue with somebody in the company that I thought was being worked out. Now Butler said the reality for local airlines is a hard one and he doesn't know why anyone would want to add any more stress to the situation. They've seen the many challenges we're having with all the fees and they've seen the numbers on the airplanes are down. They've seen the predatory practices of the national flight carrier where no matter how expensive it gets, they hold the fee structure and not pass it on. We're being hard pressed now to pass those, those taxes on. And we're talking about the introduction of the VAT now, we're talking about the fuel prices. Some airlines are putting on what they call fuel surcharges. Um, we're talking about the new fees with NAD, the moving, and we've been burdened with this. I've been talking about this since April this year and before. And I think it's now coming on the roof. So I don't believe any pilots who are making the kinds of money that they're making and seeing the kinds of issues that we're faced with at this time will be doing any really formal sick out or industrial It's hard for me to accept and believe that. In any event, Butler said Sky Bahamas had to delay some flights, direct passengers to other airlines, and redo some reservations today. He said there's also a plan in place for tomorrow should a similar situation occur. Well, that was a look at some of the top stories making news tonight. Still to come, the government's housing program is on schedule. We thought that we would have started by now, but there are things that, like I said, that the agreement said that we had to have in place before we could start building. So We'll tell you more about it after the break, plus teachers pay issues at a Crooked Island school. I'm not sure that there's sufficient space, adequate, adequate space. Represented. And we tell this back with that story right after this.